Hi, I'm Frankie, and in this video, we're going to create an Azure Logic app, one that's triggered by a Microsoft form submission and that also uses Azure OpenAI. At the end, we'll add this Azure Logic app to an online portfolio to show how you can showcase your knowledge of Azure Logic apps. Let's dive in. All right, to get started, let's create our Microsoft form. So in Microsoft Forms, I'll come and create a new form. I'll make it text. We'll title it Demo Fruit Growth Expert. And that's it for our form. When we're ready to add the form URL to our portfolio website, we can come to collect responses and we can grab the long URL or hit this button to get a shortened version. Next, let's create the Logic app. I'm in the Azure portal in the marketplace. Let's search Logic app. I'll start creating a Logic app. I'll choose to use the consumption version because I'd like to pay per operation for this Logic app. I'll create a new resource group. We'll call it RG for resource group, demo, logic app, form responder, ASIN Stark portfolio. We'll make the logic app name demo form responder. And then we'll leave the defaults and create. We can go to our resource now that it's done being created. And now let's use the Logic App Designer to create our Logic App. If you're a more advanced user of Logic Apps, you can also use the Code View. We'll use the Logic App Designer in this video. So first let's add our trigger, which will be our form. So in our trigger search bar, I will search Microsoft Forms. I'll select the trigger of when a new response is submitted. I'll have to sign in to make this connection to the Microsoft Forms. Pick your form, our demo fruit growth expert form. Now let's add an action to get the response details. Selecting our form again. And we'll get the list of response notifications. This action will make all of our answers from the Microsoft form available as dynamic variables that can be easily selected throughout the rest of our Logic App. Next, let's create an action for Azure OpenAI. We'll start with adding the action, which is a com creates completion for chat message. And we're gonna need to start by creating a connection to an OpenAI resource. So first, let's create our Azure OpenAI resource in Azure AI Foundry. I'm in Azure AI Foundry, and now let's deploy a model that we can use as our OpenAI resource in our Logic App. Let's use GPT-40 Mini. This is an advanced model that doesn't cost too much and can do a lot for a little. Call it demo GPT-40 Mini form AI. Now this part can be confusing. The connection requires an Azure OpenAI resource name and an Azure OpenAI API key. The resource name is the name of the AI resource that is associated with the model that we're deploying. It's not the model that we deployed itself. And then it's the API key for that deployed model. So going back to Azure AI Foundry, we have our API key here, which is currently secret, but the resource that is actually being used is this test MS portfolio AI resource. That is the name of our AI resource. Whereas our deployment name is right here. So let's copy from the URL, the name for the resource We'll add that as our resource name, and we'll get our API key, and we'll add that, and then we'll create this new connection. Now we need our deployment ID, 
and the deployment ID is the name of the deployment. So this is where we take the name of the deployment and add it. We also need the API version for this deployment, which you can find in this code example. Now our goal is to have someone fill out a form about what type of fruit they want to grow. We want to instruct this AI model to take that information as context and respond with instructions on how to grow that fruit and format it in an email so that can be sent to a user. To do this, we'll create a system message that tells the AI model that it's a master gardener that knows how to grow fruits and how it'll give these step-by-step -step instructions that will be provided in HTML format for an email. We want to sign its name with growth ex expert, AI growth expert, and address the email to the name of the person that was listed in the form. So we'll come over and add the name. We'll also add a user message, which prompts the AI model for what we're asking. I'll add the dynamic details of what fruit we want to learn so that the following message from the AI model will give us the email we're asking for. Next, let's create an Outlook action so we can send an email with the output from our Azure OpenAI model. I'll type send an email. We'll say Outlook send an email v2. We'll create a connection to our Outlook. Now that we're connected, let's make the email to the email that was listed in our form. So I'll get the dynamic variable from the response, what is your email? I'll make the subject, here are your growth instructions, and I'll make the body also dynamic content from our AI model, the contents of the message. This creates a for each action because there's multiple items within an object called choices, which is the output from the Azure OpenAI action in our logic app. We care about the last item where we will only pull out the content from the message and this is what will appear as the email. We'll save this, and we're now ready to give this a test. Now let's give our form a try. I'll fill in the details, Mason Stark. This is just a dummy email that I have for Mason Stark. Let's learn about apples. So we'll submit this, and come over to our Logic app, refresh the page, see that we have a logic app running. We can see it looks like it was successful. If I go back to run history, I can see it succeeded. So we should have an email. If we check Mason Stark's email, and there we are. The email that was sent with generated instructions on how to grow apples. One thing I'm noticing is it looks like this email template that was generated has these strange dash 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 HTML before the actual HTML that is outputted. I can see it down here as well. I want to remove that, so I'll add a note to the system message to not add that. So back in my Logic App Designer, we'll come here at the end of the system message. Do not include dash 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 HTML or dash 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 at beginning or end. We'll save this and we'll try it again. And I can see in this email there is no unique characters at the top here with that dash 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 HTML at the top or at the bottom. So you need to get clever sometimes with the way you craft your system messages so that the AI model knows how to act the way you want it to. Now that we have this working, let's add it to our portfolio website. Just before we do that, I want to tell you about a pilot program I'm running. I'm going to help five technology professionals earn six-figure Azure jobs in 90 days or less. If you want to see if you qualify, check out this form in the description. I'm within the code for the fictional online portfolio website for Mason Stark, and I'm going to add the Logic app, a picture of it, some of its features, 
and some functionality so someone can test it to showcase it on the portfolio website. If you missed the last video on how to build this portfolio from scratch, check the link in the description. So first, let's get this up and running. I'll run npm start. The website is running locally, and now let's update this portfolio project one with information regarding our Logic app portfolio example. So first, let's change this navigation bar. In the navigation.js file, I'll just make this logic app form responder. In the project section, I added an image to the portfolio folder underneath image. It's called logic app form responder PNG. I created this in Canva. This is a simple image that just conveys I have a logic app with a Microsoft Forms that goes to an open AI action, which then goes to an email. Let's change the title here to Logic App Form Responder. We're only going to have one set of features, so I'll remove this so we can have the larger list. I want them to take up more space, so I'll change the columns for the styling for those particular items. Now let's actually change the data itself. Now if somebody comes to the Mason Stark website, they'll see this Logic App form responder, some information about it, some of its features, and they'll know that Mason Stark knows a little something about how to build a Logic App. But what's even cooler than just seeing information about it is actually being able to try it. So we're going to add a button that allows someone who comes to the Mason Stark website to actually try this themselves. This really showcases that Mason Stark knows who he's talking about because the action is working live. Going back to the project section, underneath this paragraph, before the features, we're gonna add a button. It says try it out. Looks like we could use some margin, so we'll come to the styling. And in the styling page, we'll add a little bit of margin on the bottom for that button. Now because of this project 01, we have this button which has a link to our form. This try out button should take a user directly to trying the form themselves so that they can put in their email and they can get knowledge on how to grow any fruit they choose. Let's give it a try. And here we have the response that was emailed to Mason Stark when we just filled that in to get bananas. Now you know how to use Azure Logic Apps to automatically respond to form submissions and use OpenAI in the process. If this video was helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.